Hi everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video, and happy Wheel of Time Wednesday. Yes, last week we kind of restarted our Wheel of Time Wednesday tradition with a leak about Season 3. These were two roles for cast members that were previously announced by Watt Series, two Aiel that were joining the cast in Season 3. If you haven't seen that, please check, you know, elsewhere on the channel under the exclusive playlist for that leak. And today we're talking Objects of Power in Season 3 of the Wheel of Time. Yes, this is another leaks video on a Wheel of Time Wednesday. Get used to it, folks. We're bringing it back. Um, so, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what we do here, we talk Wheel of Time all of the time, if that already isn't obvious by all of the Wheel of Time stuff behind me. Um, if you like that sort of thing, we talk about the show, the books, the fandom, merchandise, the movies that are coming, anything and everything Wheel of Time related, that's what we talk about here on the channel. If you don't want to miss a bit of that, make sure you subscribe, like the video, of course, and tell two of your friends. Viewership and sub numbers have been on the rise lately, and that's all in good part to you folks because well let's face it i'm terrible at advertising the channel you folks do a great job at that and i want to thank you up front for that thank you very much for talking about what up with your friends and family now since we're talking leaks for season three of the wheel of time and these leaks include objects of power that are pretty important to the series i have to give some very major spoiler warnings now my leaks videos are usually pretty spoiler heavy and you'll notice i always give a spoiler warning at first and i've been asked in the past is there any way to do these videos without spoilers Fortunately, no. <laughs> it's hard to talk about things in context of the show when you have to explain them a little bit more without ruining parts of the show and the books. So all of my leaks videos are pretty spoiler heavy. I do the odd occasional spoiler free video, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, so unfortunately, if you don't like spoilers, these aren't the videos for you. So spoiler warning. In today's video, we're talking objects of power that are going to appear in season three of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show. So if you've not read the entire Wheel of Time series, that's the Eye of the World through Memory of Light, and this includes some of the addendums and short stories that are out there right now, including River of Souls, that's important. Be forewarned, I'm going to ruin plot points and character arcs from the books. And if you haven't seen the first two seasons of Stony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show streaming right now in Prime Video, be forewarned, I'm also going to ruin plot points and character arcs from that medium as well. So, even more, let's get on to the rest of the video. All right, folks, so this leak comes to us from a source close to production. It was something fun I heard and I wanted to share with you folks, but take it with a grain of salt because like all the other leaks on my channel, this is not official stuff from Sony or Amazon. It is something unofficial, leaky, coming from a source close to production. So uh, again, it doesn't represent any official stuff from Sony or Amazon. So do please take it with a grain of salt like all the other leaks on my channel. Um, now, we're talking objects of power for season three. Now, I know seasoned book readers probably already have a general idea of what I'm talking about here, considering the picture I have up on the screen, and we're talking objects of power and where we're at in the book series, uh, as far as the show goes. But there are a large number of you out there, and I, I know because you've told me, you watch the show without reading the books, and you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, so we're going to give you a quick crash course on what objects of power are in the Wheel of Time, then we'll talk about the leaks. So, there are three main types of objects of power that we're talking about today. The first one is called a Terra and Grail. You've already seen one of these in the show. In season one, when Moraine stepped into that painting or stepped near that painting to go see Swan, that was an object of power that was a Terra and Grail. They're a tool. They do something. Um, they utilize the one power to perform a task. So think of it like uh, something you could just talk to somebody over long distances make a gateway to travel somewhere instantaneous, use it as a weapon to shoot balefire, weaves of air, or fireballs, um, or go into the world of dreams. Any one of these things is a task. It's something that you can do. That's what a Terran Grail does. It's a tool that does something. Now, normally it uses either a man or a woman channeling into it with the one power to cause it to do that task. However, not all Terra and Grail require a man or a woman channeling. In fact, there are some Terra and Grail that can do the task with just a regular person using that Terra and Grail um, by using a certain sequence of instructions to use it. Now, that is the very first of three objects of power. The second one is an Engriel. You've also already seen one of those. It was that little man Engriel that uh, Moraine gave Rand in the season finale of uh, of season one. Um, what it does is it increases your ability to draw on the one power. So if you think of the one power as a cup of water and your connection to the one power as a straw, and when you drink through that straw, that's your normal ability. That's your normal amount of water or one power that you can draw into yourself. An Ingrail widens that straw. It increases the amount of power you can drink in, but there are built-in safeguards so you don't burn yourself out, draw too much power to hurt yourself, or sever your connection with the true source forever. 
there is a third type, a saw and grail. These are like and grail, only much, much, much more powerful. So instead of a straw, think you're just drinking straight from the cup at this point. You're not limiting your ability to draw on the one power. And there are different levels of, uh, uh, of strength of sign grail. Um, some are less powerful than others, but every one of them is insanely powerful and can just totally increase your ability to use the one power. So some of these are real important to the book series. So today we're going to talk about the Choden Call. Uh, which is a combination of a Sun Grail and a Terran Grail, and Sacronin. Now, some of you may not recognize that if you haven't read the books, uh, but those of you who have read the books know what I'm talking about. So, in the book series, the Choden Call are the two most powerful Sun Grail ever created. They were created during the War of Power, basically as a way to like to use as a weapon. They have Tear and Grail access keys because these Sa and Grail were so big. You can see in the picture here, these uh, statues were so massive holding these crystal globes, one for a man and one for a woman, that they were not transportable. You couldn't move them around. So they had a Tear and Grail access key so you could use them from pretty much anywhere in the world. And it increased your ability to use the one power by an uh, absolute ton. Um, they're used in the book series in a couple of different instances, and they're very important to the plot. There's almost no way they wouldn't be in the show. We're going to get to that in a second. The second one is Sacronin. A little bit less important, but uh, on the scale of Sangreal, it's just below the Choden Call. So it is probably the second most powerful Sangreal a man can use. It came in two parts. The first part was like a rod with kind of a fanned out end on the other side. And the other part looked like a cup. When you put them together, it looked like an hourglass in the end of a rod. It was hidden during the War of Power because it was so powerful that they were scared to use it. Um, and after the breaking and when everyone woke up, Demandred, one of the Forsaken, made it his quest to basically find Sacronin and, and have it and use it to confront the dragon in the last battle. So he found both parts, and it's all detailed out in River's Souls. That was a short story that was written that details... Um, Demandrin's journey to find Sacronin and kind of fleshes out his character a little bit more. And I warn you, if you don't like the Forsaken, don't read this story because it's going to make you like Demandrin. <laughs> it makes him a lot more human, fleshes out his character a lot more. One of the big complaints from a lot of people of the series is that the villains were very 2D. They didn't have tons of motivations or they had very narrow motivations and they weren't really seen as real people. Um, this really fleshes out Demandred and makes him makes you feel for him. makes you makes you realize why he's doing this, and it puts a lot of conflict in his story. Um, so this Sun Grail is special in the fact that we don't know a ton about it in all of the lore, in all the appendices, in the world of the Wheel of Time, in all of the fan websites. There's not a ton known about it in the book series. Demandred says that he bonded himself to it, and anyone else who tries to channel into it um, after he's bonded to it the power would be just turned against them and they'd be burned out. We don't know if that's true. It was never really talked about after that fact. There's also sort of a theory or rumor about Sacronin that it is cursed. And by cursed, I don't mean in the general sense of, of the word. It just does something to the user. Basically, there's a ton of theories of what it is, but they all boil down to it dooms the user in some way, shape, or form. It allows them to perform tasks to achieve their desires at the cost of everything else. Um, and we kind of see that demander in the last battle because he gets very, very narrow focused on what he's doing and he makes a ton of mistakes and that eventually leads to his downfall. Where if he was thinking a little bit clearer, had a little less arrogance, a little bit less um, feeling invincible, he probably would have done a lot better than he did. Um, I won't spoil too much the last battle in demander because there's some things in there that are really, really cool that I do want to talk about in another video, but... Even though I gave full book spoilers, I'm not going to spoil the coolness of the last battle with Demander. But, again, none of that was ever really officially referenced again. Um, there's not a whole lot about it out there. That's just kind of what we know and conjecture about this Sangriel. Now, in the show, you pretty much are guaranteed that we're getting the Shogun Call. Because in the book series, they were used for one very specific, very, very important step. And that was the cleansing of the male half of the true source. So they were used by Nynaeve and Rand to basically clean the taint off um, the male half of the true source. Very, very cool sequence of events in the books. It happens during a big battle. Some of the Forsaken are there. There are a bunch of other people. Some people get revealed uh, as, as who they have been for a while in the books. And you find out they're bad. 
it's it's really really neat i don't want to spoil too much of it but they're important because you had to draw a ton of power in and cleanse that power all at once and that's what this sun grail did in the book series so we figured we'd see them in the show I've learned from a source close to production that the Chosen Call will be in the third season. Uh, it's not going to be the giant statues that you see, at least not when we first get introduced to it. It'll be a little globe, kind of like what you see here on the screen. These statues in the book series are massive. They have big crystal globes in their hands. What we're going to see is a smaller crystal globe. This will be found in Roydian by Maureen. Um, it will be placed there in Roydian by the Genail. So you're going to get to see some of this stuff during the way back when Rand goes through the columns, and you get to see some cool things there. And then Maureen finds this when she's in Roydian. Now, the kicker is, it's not called the Chodan Call. They call it Sacronin. So they're using the name of Demandred Sangreal to talk about this Sangreal. And it's something that Maureen uses. So she sort of becomes lost in it when she finds it. And she's lost in the, the, the rolling waves of power. Uh, and it's going to feature pretty heavily and importantly in the story going forward in the show, of course. Um, but we're not going to spoil that part of it for you folks. So we are seeing the Choden Call next season in uh, Season 3. But it's going to be called Sacronin. And Maureen is the one that finds it and does get kind of lost in it when she, she uses a little bit and land kind of snaps her out of it. So that's the scene where that happens. So let me know in the comments down below. If you folks are just show watchers, you haven't read the books, let me know if you've learned something today. Is this something cool? Is this something new for you folks? And for you folks who are book readers as well, how do you feel about the change? I personally kind of like it because, let's face it, Demandred is my favorite Forsaken. I was really, really hoping that they would flush him out. We'd get a lot of backstory. We'd see the stuff in Shara. We'd see his whole journey to get Sakrin, and they kind of put him on screen as sort of a... A parallel to Rand, but in a different side of the continent. He had his own set of prophecies. I thought they were going to do all that cool stuff. Unfortunately, since the show is pretty truncated in time, we're only getting eight, eight episodes per season. The episodes are around an hour long each. And they're already cutting out big swaths of the books because they have to. They kind of have to compress and combine things to tell the story. Um, pretty much after the first season aired, I knew that wasn't going to happen. Now, this is sort of a kind of a neat callback and a nod to Demander and uh, Demander of Sangriel and that kind of storyline. Um, and I like the fact that they did that. They, they just didn't ignore the fact and the Chodan Call were the Chodan Call. Plus, let's face it, they're not calling the taint the taint in the show. So why would they call the Chode in Call the Chodan Call? So there's kind of a play on words there and they're trying to be careful around uh, how, how people can make fun of it, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I'm not sure if that's the reason for the name change, but that's the reason I made up in my own head and it kind of sounds right. So let me know in the comments down below what do you folks think of the change? What do you folks think of that particular scene? And uh, how do you think it's going to factor into the show in the third season? Now we all know there's various events that are happening in the books going forward, especially in the Fires of Heaven, that are likely to be shown on screen. And there's been a lot of speculation in the fandom and in the community that we're going to see one of those scenes next season near the end of the season because of Moraine's real-life actress, Rosamund Pike, moving away from Prague back to London. Now, this could be for any number of reasons. She's an executive producer on the show, so she's not going anywhere anytime soon. But it is a little bit telling that she stayed in Prague for the first couple seasons of the show, and then she's moving away. So do you think it'll factor into that particular scene? Do you think the scene will play out the same way? It's something that I want to give specific spoilers for in another video and really explore, but let me know your comments down below and thoughts. And uh, I'll try to include some of the more interesting thoughts and comments in the video when I do it. All right. Thank you all very much for sticking around to for the rest. Of, no, I, I messed that up. I'm sorry, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end. Here's to many more.